Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. We really appreciate it. Welcome to our September ALS learning series on home automation. Before we begin, I just want to remind you all that you are muted. You're not on camera, so you can just sit back, relax. Um, you may notice that there is a Q&A box um, just to the right of your screen. Please feel free to drop in any questions or comments or tips that you might have um, because we recognize home automation covers a large um, swath of kind of the technology piece. So if something isn't particularly mentioned in this presentation, but you've used it successfully, um, it would be great to know what you guys are using. So feel free to um, drop that in the chat as well. Um, the presentation today should take about an hour or so, um, but we will be mindful of your time. If anyone has to chat or has um, work commitments that they may need to run off to, don't worry, you are being recorded. Um, we will have Jeff's slides and this presentation up on our website and our YouTube channel probably within the next couple days or so, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, or if you know anybody who had signed up but at the last minute wasn't able to attend, um, this will be recorded. Um, so let's get started. I am Anne-Marie Doyle. I'm the Community Education Manager at Les Turner ALS Foundation. Um, thank you for joining us for Jeff's presentation. Before I formally introduce you to Jeff, though, I do want to talk a little bit about our sponsors and about us today. So the ALS Learning Series is made possible because of the Gilbert and Jacqueline Fern Foundation and our industry partners. Cytokinetics and Mitsubishi Tanabe Pharma America. And who are we? Well, we are leaders in comprehensive personalized ALS care and research. And we realize that people living with ALS may feel overwhelmed um, and unsure of what questions to ask and what to do next. And that's really where our support service team shines. We're comprised of knowledgeable and compassionate nurses, social workers, counselors, with many years of experience uh, guiding people and their families affected by ALS. We offer a variety of services, including but not limited to care visits by ALS support coordinators, need-based grants, and connecting um, people with community resources. At the Lois and Solia ALS Clinic at the Les Turner ALS Center at Northwestern Medicine, we offer access to enrollment in clinical trials and a multidisciplinary team to provide comprehensive support. We also know that making decisions about ALS in your care can be really overwhelming, but again, we're here to help. Les Turner ALS Foundation has resources to help you learn about your options. We have these guides that are available. We also have the My ALS Decision Tool um, that can help you make some informed decisions about your care um, regarding um, some breathing uh, decisions as well as nutritional decisions. All right, so now I am pleased to introduce you to Jeff Powers. Um, as program manager, Jeff oversees all of Team Gleason's program services, including the technology and equipment team, the adventure program, and respite services. Jeff joined Team Gleason on the simple premise that if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. He's a native of New Orleans, and he grew up with a sense of community, compassion for helping other people, and to make the world a better place. Uh, Jeff also has an uncle who had ALS, and um, through that was just impassioned by the work of Team Gleason, and he's the perfect fit for advancing um, that mission. So welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you for that introduction. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for spending the time um, today with us to learn more about home automation. 
um, you know, home automation is one of those topics that can seem a little overwhelming and daunting. Um, so hopefully by the end of this, you'll have at least one takeaway or learn at least one thing um, about home automation and maybe that'll motivate you to get started and, and figure out how you can implement this in your home. Um, so just before we begin, do wanna just tell you a little bit about uh, myself. Um, as Emery kind of hit on some of that, but yeah, I've been with Team Gleason since November of 2019, so almost three years now. Um, when I first started at Team Gleason, I was a tech and equipment associate, and I did that for a few years. So um, I was doing the direct request fulfillment uh, for many of our program services, so I have that experience and, and may have even worked with some of you on this uh, webinar today. Um, and then I, I kind of came by, I came uh, to Team Gleason by way of personal finance, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, but my degree, I got a degree in finance from LSU, um, started working in personal finance for a couple of years, and I just really wasn't loving it. Um, I didn't have that fulfillment in my life. And so I was just having a conversation with a good friend of mine at a wedding. Um, who actually introduced me to uh, Team Gleason speech language pathologist, Emily Kornman. Um, we have a lot of mutual friends. And um, so I spoke to Emily and it just so happened that Team Gleason was posting a, a job position the following day. Um, so I was like one of the first ones to apply and was lucky enough to get the job here. And it's been a truly remarkable and fulfilling experience uh, with my time here at Team Gleason and uh, giving me the ability to serve the ALS community has been truly amazing. So um, again, thank you all for joining today and, and spending the time to learn about home automation. Awesome. So we, we wanna, Team Gleason wants to start every, uh, every webinar, every presentation with our mission because it's core to who we are. Um, and that mission is to improve the life for people living with ALS by delivering innovative technology and equipment, as well as providing an empowering and improved life experience. And we truly believe that this is done, you know, through that equipment and technology, as well as our adventure program. Well. So what is home automation? Um, you know, simply and broadly defined, home automation is the automatic and electronic control of devices in your home. Um, these devices can include uh, TV, lights, your thermostat, um, your doors, including your garage door opener, uh, which can be automated, phones, appliances, and many, many other things. Um, I've seen people, um, who have actually automated a microwave. So if you can dream it, you can probably do it. But for the purposes of um, this presentation, I really wanna hone in and focus on, you know, what Team Gleason has found useful and beneficial to people with ALS and how we have chosen to serve um, through home automation. Um, but of course, there are many, many different products out there. Um, so you can go to the next slide. So why use home automation? As I mentioned, it can be a pretty overwhelming and daunting um, conversation or topic for people, but Team Gleason wants people living with ALS to remain as independent as possible, no matter where you are in your progression. Um, and home automation can increase uh, independence for people living with ALS while also reducing uh, the burden on caregivers uh, because home automation gives back that ability to do things that were previously mindless activities. Uh, such as turning on your lights or adjusting the thermostat or unlocking the front door for a guest. So I'm sure many of you know that those little things can be really frustrating and, and start to add up. And, and home automation is really great in sort of giving some of that power back um, and giving that ability to do these previously mindless things. So it's, it's really a great program that we're super proud of and happy to be able to help with. And yeah, I just want to introduce this video. Um, this is Miss Charlotte. Miss Charlotte lives here um, in the New Orleans area. We helped her with home automation a couple of years ago. It's funny because Miss Charlotte is actually one of the uh, least technically sound people, um, but has really embraced home automation in her home. And um, she'll kind of cover what that what that has meant to her. Thank you. 
I was diagnosed with PLS, primary lateral sclerosis, but it is closely related to ALS. And it's just a slower progression. My hand was getting weaker and it was getting harder for me to walk and my voice had changed. So, you know, all this was leading up to some, something else. My daughter called the Gleason Foundation, told them that I had to move because the house I was in was not accessible. And that they, you know, we found a house and it needed to be renovated. They showed what had to be done to make it accessible for me. From there, they were able to get an electrician and get, you know, the light switches. All of them are programmed. Outside light, the kitchen lights, the living room lights, the bathroom lights, my bedroom lights. Alexa, turn on the bedroom lights. And all I have to do, you know, is ask her to turn them off or turn them on. The thermostat. Uh, she can adjust that by me, even the door now. I don't have to worry about having a key outside to let uh, somebody in. I can tell Alexa to help me with that. If I can't speak to Alexa, I can use the app to control the automation, which talks to Alexa. And I think that if anybody, especially those, uh, ALS patients who cannot speak. It's such a wonderful thing to have for them to be able to be independent and having that technology installed where everything is just so easy for me now. It's been a great help. Everything has just improved so much. Now I'm able to do that before I couldn't without their help. So, um, yeah, Miss Charlotte pretty much sums up our, our home automation program perfectly there. We could almost in the in the slides there. But if she didn't convince you um, on the next slide here, I have a testimonial from someone who I personally assisted home automation with. Um, this is uh, Shirley in Georgetown, Texas. and. She writes, Team Gleason, I can't thank you enough for being such an inspiration in my life. I was feeling lost and hopeless until I came in contact with you all. My home automation has been a game changer for me. My smart lock and ring camera have given me a sense of security and makes me feel safe now that I can know who is at the door and control who comes in and out of the door simply by speaking to Alexa. Um, I've fallen in love with my Fire TV Cube I can control my TV, such as turning it off and on, changing channels, and don't have to bother anyone to find a movie or go without watching TV when my ability to use a remote has been compromised due to ALS. The use of smart switches to control the light or having the ability to control the thermostat gives me a sense of power again. It's the small things that matter to someone who has a disability. Um, she even goes on to add that we helped her with a shower chair, which has made um, bath time much easier uh, with getting in and out of the tub. Um, and then I love how she ends it with no white flags. So um, again, a great summation of our home automation program and the difference that it can make in someone's life. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, with getting started with home automation. So uh, the first is while Team Gleason can assist you with purchasing the actual devices, um, it is the responsibility of the family uh, to have them wired and installed. Um, you know, we can't pay for an electrician to come out and do that for you. Um, but once the devices are installed, our partners at Axial Control will help you with getting the system set up and connected and working properly. Um, and we'll go more um, into who Axial Control is and what they do um, in just a few minutes. The other thing to keep in mind, it's important, um, is that in order to install smart switches, such as lights and dimmers and fan controllers, um, you will need to have um, what's called neutral wiring in your switch plates. And again, we'll talk about that in just a second. 
The other thing to keep in mind is that there are different ways to access and control your home automation devices. Um, and then lastly, uh, you must have a Windows-based computer to plug the Z-Stick into in order to act as your hub, which will um, keep all of those devices connected. And again, we'll, we'll cover these things in more detail. So uh, first, the, like I mentioned, um, you know, you do need to have neutral wiring in order to install any smart switches. So typically what you would see in an older home is just the line, the load, and the grounded wire. But again, for the smart switch installation, you do need to have that neutral wire. Um, these are pretty uh, technical definitions, but uh, the neutral wire carries the circuit back to the original power source, which um, it gives the current circulation throughout your electrical system. Um, which allows the electricity to be fully utilized. Um, additionally, that does prevent faulty or excess currents from residing in your outlet. How the ground wire uh, differs is that it acts as the defense against unstable electric currents. Um, and when an electrical accident, such as a short circuit occurs, um, the ground wire will take the unstable current away from your electrical system um, and sends it towards the ground. Um, and then um, if you go to the next slide, um, so how to tell if you have neutral wiring. Um, I have a video here. We're not going to play it. It's super technical and boring, um, but I did want to include it and there's a link to it in the chat. I wanted to include it in case any of you want to look to see if you have neutral wiring or interested in installing smart switches. Um, you can watch that video um, on your own time. But the easiest way uh, to tell if you have neutral wiring is just to understand when your home was built or at least last underwent a major renovation, which included uh, a rewiring of your switch plates. If that happened uh, post 1990-ish, um, it's likely that you do have neutral wiring running throughout your home. And if it happened prior to that, um, it's likely you don't have neutral wiring. Um, but the other way that you could check is just to consult an electrician um, or maybe a handy person in the family, um, you know, just have them come out and check for you to see if you have uh, that, that uh, neutral wiring. Or of course you could do it yourself. The important thing to keep in mind is that you turn off um, your, um, your breaker box to that area that you're checking um, to avoid an electrocution. Um, the switches, it, it's not enough electricity to knock you out. It'll just zap you and wake you up a little bit. Um, but it, it's best to have an abundance of caution and turn that breaker off before you start uh, touching the wires. But if you see in the, um, in the title, in the image of that, uh, the video, in the back, there are the white wires that are twisted together with a yellow cap. That's the neutral wire. So, um, it should be as easy as just popping off that plate and looking. But of course, if it's more complicated, everybody's home is probably wired slightly different. You know, it might be best to have an electrician come out and check for you. So I mentioned um, axial control. That is the system that Team Gleason um, uses. It's it's um, axial is a smart home software used to automate and control your smart home devices. Um, it, it does integrate with many popular brands, including Z-Wave, uh, Nest, Clipsol, Philips Hue, Wemo, and many, many more. Um, we did partner with Axial Control due to its ability to integrate with many different brands and because of its compatibility with Windows-based computers. This is an absolutely important distinction here because the majority of iGaze speech generating devices are Windows-based. Um, and it's vital for people living with ALS to be able to control your environment using that communication device um, via eye gaze. Um, and then the other benefit of the Axial system is actually that if your internet goes out, um, you can still use the system with the Z-Wave components. Now, you know, if your internet goes out, you may not be able to use like your Google Home setup or your Amazon Alexa, but you will should still be able to control your light switches um, and thermostat and the things that do use that Z-Wave component. So um, that's actually a really great uh, feature. I wanted to highlight a few products that we typically provide 
um, these are the Amazon products that we send um, a lot. And we, we do have these drop shipped. If we're helping you with home automation, we're just gonna have these products drop shipped to you directly, um, which of course with uh, Amazon shipping takes like two days. But in the, the bottom left corner there, you have an Amazon a TV cube. Uh, the, the Amazon Cube has Alexa built into it, and it's also similar to like a Fire Stick, but it does go um, beyond the Fire Stick in that it allows you to switch HDMI inputs, um, which is really awesome because you can switch from your streaming services uh, to your cable on your own by giving a command through Alexa um, or through your communication device. Um, it also allows you to change the channel and adjust the volume all on your own. Um, and so this is a really, really awesome uh, piece of technology that we provide a lot of. And then in the middle there, I'm sure most or all of you have seen a Ring Video doorbell. We send these a lot in combination with the Amazon Echo Show, which you see in the bottom right, um, and an automatic deadbolt lock, a Z-Wave deadbolt lock. Um, the ring doorbell is awesome because if you can't get up to go answer the door yourself, um, you know, but maybe you're still home alone by yourself or you just want to have that ability to do that. It's awesome. When somebody rings the doorbell, you can connect it to the Amazon Echo Show so that way you can see who's at the door. And using the Z-Wave um, uh, deadbolt lock, you can let them in. Um, or, of course, if you don't want them in, just keep the door locked. Um, which is great if you have caregivers who are in and out. As Ms. Charlotte said in the video, she has caregivers that come in and out of the house. So instead of leaving a key outside, um, they can either punch in a code or she can let them in by giving the command to the Alexa. And then on the next slide are the uh, Z-Wave compatible devices that we, uh, we order through Axial Control. Um, in the bottom left is the Z-Stick. Uh, the Z-Stick is the thing that just looks like a USB flash drive, but it emits a Z-Wave signal, um, which is the Z-Wave signal is um, similar, uh, but different from like Bluetooth. Um, there's also Zigbee or maybe even Wi-Fi products. Um, but the Z-Stick is the thing that needs to be plugged into the Windows-based computer um, in order to act as the hub which is where it's like this centralized information that keeps all of the devices connected. And then in the middle, in the middle there is that uh, quick set Z-Wave deadbolt lock. Um, the one we provide does come in three colors. It's brass, nickel, and Venetian bronze. This is the Venetian bronze one. Um, and of course, that again gives you the ability to lock and unlock your front door. Um, and then in the bottom right is what you would see as a standard Z-Wave Go Control uh, wall switch. This is a, a paddle switch. We can also provide the single pole switches or dimmers. Um, we can also provide fan controller switches. So um, again, keep in mind, in order for these to be installed, you do need to have that neutral wiring. And then in the, the top middle, if you go back, the top middle there is an appliance module, also known as a lamp plug-in. Um, and that is, uh, it's both a good workaround and just good to have because it gives you, all you have to do is just plug it into a wall outlet. And then you plug the lamp or the appliance into that module. And it gives you the ability to turn it on and off through the Axial system. Um, this is a good workaround if you have an older home um, or you don't have, you know, neutral wiring, but you want to be able to turn lamps on and off. Um, this gives you the ability to do that. In the top right is what you would see as a standard Honeywell Z-Wave thermostat. If y'all are anything like me um, and my wife, we argue over what the temperature in the house should be all the time. Um, and so... If you, um, you know, and, and if you have ALS, you, you're probably going to want to have that ability to adjust that thermostat um, throughout the day. Um, so that gives you the ability to do so. I mentioned previously that there are a few different ways of accessing um, this technology or different selection methods. The first of which is, you know, touchscreen. Um, otherwise known as direct selection, which if you still have upper extremity function, 
um, you can just use a smartphone or a tablet um, or something like that to control um, the axial system. There are also um, different types of switches. There are single switches, dual switches, and even the head array on your wheelchair can act as a switch, um, which is really, really awesome. Um, of course, uh, there is voice activation. Um, note, uh, an important note, is that if a, an individual can create stored phrases on an AAC device to speak the commands. AAC, if you're not aware, stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. You may also see Speech Generating Device or simply just Communication Device. Um, storing those phrases is really awesome because you'll find yourself, if you have experience with home automation um, or when or if you do start using it, you'll find yourself repeating the same commands to the Alexa um, or other pro or other you know Google Home setup or whatever, you'll repeat yourself a lot in those same commands. So instead of having to type it out each time, you can actually store the phrases um, and that way they're easier and quicker to find. Of course, the other way of accessing this is through eye gaze. And again, the reason we chose Axial a few years ago is because it is Windows compatible the app is not web-based, it is an actual app that you can download onto your iGaze communication device and directly control um, each individual home automation device through that. Um, and then there are different mouses. You'll have your standard mouse, which you, you, know, you see here. Um, there are head mouses, if you still have you know, good head control, um, and of course, wearable mouses such as the Qizono. Um, and then another great uh, feature that people may not be aware of is that you can control things through your wheelchair joystick because it does, in most cases, have uh, Bluetooth compatibility. This is the Axial Hub. Um, again, uh, just to let you know, a hub is a system that connects all of the smart devices together. Um, there are many different types, but this is the one that we chose. Um, there are different transmission types, as I mentioned previously, including Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, et cetera. Uh, we chose the Z-Wave um, because it has good solid connectivity, unlike Bluetooth, but it also, um, if you do Wi-Fi, it, having many different Wi-Fi based devices in your home will start to eat into your bandwidth. Um, and so this is good because it doesn't do that and you don't have to spend as much money on uh, a stronger Wi-Fi uh, signal in your home. And again, just to note, it does need to be, this, this stick, the Z-Stick needs to be plugged into the Windows-based computer um, to act as that hub and store all of the information there. So um, that's the gist of it. Um, from here, um, if you apply, and we'll put the, the, the link to submit an application on our website for assistance with home automation is on the next slide. We'll also put it in the chat. Um, but when you fill out the application for assistance with home automation, uh, one of our tech and equipment associates is gonna work with you uh, to determine which home automation devices are the best. Um, again, keep in mind that we can't automate an entire house. Um, so what we try to do is focus on one or two rooms where you spend the majority of your time and try to fully automate those environments to the best of our ability. Um, and if you, of course, want to add your own compatible to the devices to your system, um, you could always do that after the fact if there are more things that um, you want to do. You know, we find that if you just start small and get used to using the system with maybe a couple of different things, um, then you can start to fold in more and more devices as time goes on. Um, but the tech associate's gonna work with you um, on that initial call to get a wish list of items that you want, and then we'll be able to determine um, which ones we can provide for you. Um, and then we'll either place that order, like I said, for the Amazon stuff, we'll order that directly and have it drop shipped, and then for the Axial products, we'll order through them. So um, I hope that was a good overview of, you know, our home automation system. If you have any further questions, you know, we'll have a Q&A session here shortly, but if you have any questions or think of something after the fact, or maybe don't want to put it in the chat, go ahead and email me. Um, if I don't have the answer for you, I'll try to find one. Um, and of course, if you're ready to start this process and receive assistance with home automation, 
go ahead and fill out that application and start a conversation um, with one of these beautiful people here that work for Team Gleason. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. And just a reminder, I did just drop Jeff's uh, email into the chat box. Above that, we have that YouTube video link um, that checks to see whether or not you have neutral wiring. Um, we also have the teamgleason.org backslash need assistance. So that'll take you to, let's see if I, can get out of presentation mode, that will take you to this homepage here. So um, this is where you can apply for assistance for a device copay, voice and message banking, home automation, equipment, wheelchair seat elevator, communication device loaner, and then adventures. So if you wanna go to a home automation, you'll click on that. And then I believe Jeff, this takes you directly to the form, right? Yeah. Correct. And if you are interested in just reading more about some of our other program services, you can click on that PALS resource tab in the upper right corner there. Ah, okay. PALS resource. There we go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Let me get back here and we'll get back to our Q&A. Um, so Jeff, again, thank you so much. I've been manning um, our chat feature here as well as thank you to everybody who provided some questions ahead of time. Um, but Jeff, I guess one of the first questions that popped up was if somebody has already used Team Gleason, say to cover a seat elevator for their wheelchair or voice banking, um, would that preclude them for asking assistance for home automation? Um, is there a number of times you can contact Team Gleason? Can you explain that a little bit more? Infinity times. Um, no, we, we actually love when people reach out to us for multiple program services um, and definitely encourage you do that. Just because we've helped with one thing um, already is definitely does not mean that we're not going to help with with another. Um, you know, our budgets are all separated by program services program services in the beginning of the year, so one does not impact the other. Um, and now, actually, all of our tech and equipment associates are cross trained on all of our program um, oh. services outside of Adventures. Um, so that way, hopefully, it'll create a more seamless experience for people who need assistance with multiple things. Um, in that initial call with, with one of our associates, just go ahead and mention that um, if you are interested in multiple things, and they can certainly help with, uh, help with that. But we oh, encourage okay. you to reach out for multiple, multiple things. Fantastic. And then um, another kind of common question that we got was, how does one pay for all of this? Um, so I think you touched on this a little bit as well. Um, I believe Team Gleason can help. And then somebody just um, also asked, is there um, a cutoff for receiving assistance from Team Gleason? Like, is there an income cutoff or anything like that? We, we don't look at any income requirements uh, when it comes to helping people with ALS. Um, and then if, if specific to home automation, yeah, we, we do, as I mentioned, pay for that. Again, we try, we can't pay, we can't afford to pay for like the entire home to be automated. So we try to narrow in on, you know, the one or two environments where that person would spend the majority of their time, which is typically like a bedroom and bathroom, and then maybe like the common area or living room. Um, and then we try to figure out how we can best automate those environments. And in doing so, we typically find that um, that puts us in a, a very attainable um, uh, spot as far as the budget goes. I did want to note, um, if any of you are receiving VA benefits, home automation is fully covered, and I cannot encourage you enough uh, to utilize that. They will pay for the entire home to be automated. Thank you for um, bringing that out. I think sometimes we tend to forget about all the things that the VA can cover for people with ALS. Um, yep. So 
that is a great plug. So if you are a veteran and you have set up um, help um, or assistance through the VA, you can get quite a bit covered. Yes, absolutely. Um, Ken, Team Gleason, kind of veering off, but I think it comes mm -hmm. back to a lot of the stuff that um, you do cover, um, you help with a lot, but can Team Gleason help fund an electric wheelchair? Um, do you mind just going over what you can cover again and what you can't? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, so we cannot assist with the copay or out-of-pocket expense for a Group 3 power wheelchair. Um, however, we do have a grant that funds the seat elevator function of the power wheelchair. Um, the seat elevator is an incredible feature of the, por of the power wheelchair that allows the individual to recline, raise, and tilt uh, the entire seat of the chair which does have, you know, social and emotional benefits, as well as medical benefits, um, you know, as far as like a reduction of pain from having to look up at people constantly. Um, the important thing to know with that seat elevator grant is that you apply uh, for the grant through our website um, and make sure that that's all processed prior to the chair being ordered. Unfortunately, once your power wheelchair is ordered, um, we can't go back and add that grant or add that seat elevator feature. Um, as far as our other program services go, uh, just to run through them, um, you know, they are predominantly focused on technology and equipment. However, um, our founder, Steve Gleason, and his wife, Michelle, are avid adventurers and travelers, um, always were and still are to this day. And so one of the program services that we have that we're most proud of is our adventure program, um, which does provide the ability to create lifelong memories um, for, you know, those bucket list type of trips um, for people living with ALS. Um, we are limited with the amount that we can, um, you know, do per month. Um, we are currently, due to COVID protocols, not doing any international trips at the moment. Hopefully that'll open back up next year. Um, but yeah, go ahead and, and, you know, if you have some time, go to our website, read about that adventure program and fill out an application. Um, if there's a trip you've been wanting to take but haven't, you know, had the ability to, you know, ALS is a really tough um, disease. It's expensive and it's also tough to travel, but we have some good information on, um, you know, how you can travel even with ALS. Um, so the adventure program is awesome. Awesome. And then for people who are newly diagnosed or, you know, who still have, you know, good speech, we highly, highly recommend they take advantage of voice and message banking. Um, we help with voice and message banking in two ways. Um, if you just need help with funding and you're receiving assistance from your SLP through the process, we'll just go ahead and take care of the funding for that. And if you do need assistance throughout the process, um, we have a partnership with the folks at Boston Children's Hospital and that uh, partnership was created and it's called the ALS Augmentative Communication Program um, and they'll actually assist you throughout the process of doing voice banking. If you don't know, voice banking is a way of digitally recording and storing phrases. Um, that way, um, you know, when the time comes for you to get a communication device, it'll actually sound like your voice um, coming out of the machine as opposed to just, you know, a standard voice. And then message banking is actually just recording words, phrases, um, jokes that you may use. Um, and then of course you can upload those to the communication device. Mentioning the communication device, uh, we help uh, people obtain those in, in two ways. Uh, first of which is through our copay program. Um, you may know uh, insurance typically covers up to 20% of the cost of a communic, I'm, I'm sorry, up to 80% of the cost of a communication device once every five years. Um, so Team Gleason actually has a program that's gonna pay um, up to 20% of that copay cost for your communication device. Um, and then for those who can't go through insurance or whose insurance denies their um, claim for a communication device, we have a loaner program. So we provide long-term um, loaner communication devices for people who can't go through insurance for um, for a device. Um, keep in mind, uh, we 
due to such high demand for the long-term loaners and our limited supply of devices, we can no longer provide like short-term loaners while the individual waits for their insurance funded device to come in. So just a little caveat to keep in mind there. Yeah. We also help with equipment. Um, so, you know, we, we try to take everything on a case by case basis here, but the main equipment uh, that we provide are shower chairs. Um, the tilt and place shower chairs are really great through new products is a really great um, piece of equipment and we provide those a good bit. Um, we also provide portable wheelchairs. So maybe, um, you know, someone can still walk in, you know, short spurts, um, but for those, you know, longer walks, you may need a portable chair and you're not quite ready for that big group three power wheelchair. We can provide you um, a portable one. It's great for travel and, and you can fold it up and throw it in the trunk of a car and, and be on your way. <clears throat> and then we do uh, provide ramps. Now we can't unfortunately help with, um, you know, a build out of a, a big like wooden ramp or anything like that, that involves, um, a contractor, um, we can provide threshold ramps and uh, portable ramps of up to 12 feet in length. And then you'll notice here, I just want to say one thing, we, we can't help with home modifications. Yeah. Um, again, anything that involves like direct payment to contractors and things like that, we just can't get involved with. And because it's it's so expensive and while we are a national organization, we're still a small mom and pop. Um, so that's something, you know, we've had to make the hard decision to not provide. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has further questions about some common home modifications, we have on our website a webinar from, I believe, January of this year on home modifications. Um, so nice. if you go to um, our lesturnerals.com backslash resources, um, there will be a link to our ALS learning series, which will take you to that part of our website, and you can just browse to see, I believe it was January 2021. Um, That's great to yeah. know. I'll actually yeah. um, use that to send to people because we get questions about home modifications all the time. So thank you. Yeah. We also have an ALS and mobility downloadable guide as well under lesturnerals.com org backslash resources um which you may find helpful as well yeah awesome um jeff what about um kind of another question that came through was just um different access so we had somebody who said mm -hmm. they use alexa still with their voice but when they wear their non-invasive venting like the mask gets in the way um other people had questions about um, can you do more than one method? Like, can you use your voice and then maybe the joystick on your wheelchair um, or using Alexa without their hands is really hard. Do you have any advice um, covering kind of multiple access methods? Yeah, um, I would say it is, that's so dependent and specific to the individual to person. The person. And if there are like specific questions that anybody has on that, go ahead and email me. Let me know, you know, what your current situation okay. is. And I'll try to give you a more um, nailed down piece of advice. But just to generally answer, yeah, you can do multiple things. I mean, the system, as I mentioned before, obviously voice access is what most people are aware of with the Amazon Alexa system. Um, if voice is, if you're having troubles with with like projecting your voice, um, it could help to use a voice amplifier um, that could provide a little more projection. So that way the Alexa picks up your voice. Um, if you have upper extremity function, you can access it directly through the Axial app um, on uh, that's compatible with Android, iOS, tablets and smartphones. Yeah, you can do, if you implement switch access, you can use that. Um, so yeah, there are multiple different access methods, but if you have any specific questions, like I mentioned, go ahead and reach out to me. And you would still be able to use more than one access method, correct? Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. Um, what about um, another question that kind of came up was, Somebody was building um, 
a new home and they want to make it accessible, what technologies are the best um, to be built into the original design? And what do you think maybe somebody could wait on? Again, that's one of those questions that it really depends. Um, and it definitely depends on your budget. Um, you know, these things can get expensive quick, but um, some things that can be built into that original design include like widening doors, um, building a shower with no lip, so that way the shower chair can just roll in and out of the shower, um, positioning the toilet in comparison to the shower, making sure you leave yourself enough space for ease of transfers. Um, you know, obviously there, the more space, the better. Um, mm -hmm. As far as home automation goes, just making sure that that neutral wiring is going to be um, installed, which Again, as I mentioned in the presentation, it's more than likely going to be, but of course, definitely um, ask those questions. Um, if you're, you know, if you're building it out, why not just start installing those smart switches now? Um, you can include smart LED lights, uh, the smart thermostat, um, the doorbell can be installed there too at the beginning. Um, anything that needs to be wired can can go ahead and, and be utilized in the beginning of that new accessible home being built out. Um, make sure though that you are focusing or thinking about um, using like a cohesive program. So if you're going to use Z-Wave, make sure it's Z-Wave throughout the entire home and that way it's not like segmented and broken up. Mm -hmm. Kind of Building off of that, um, somebody did ask, is there any, good, or do you know of any good compatibility with iOS? Because it sounds like a lot um, does work really well with a personal computer. Um, any advice with those people that tend to use more Apple-based products? Um. The Axial system does have an iOS-based app. I can speak to that. Um, as far as other things go, you know, I'm not a speech therapist or an yeah. ATP or an ATP or assistive technology professional. Um, if you, you know, I do highly recommend if you have specific questions to that, ask an SLP, an OT, or an ATP, which is an assistive technology professional. Those people, it's their job to work on those things every single day, and they're super super informed on the latest technology um <clears throat> again if you do have any specific questions shoot me an email i may not have the answer but i'll try to find it for you yep um is there anything better than echo to connect for a hands-free telephone this person said that um thurs frequently will like drop calls the echo will drop calls yes yeah hmm i wonder i wonder if that individual has like a communication device that they could okay. connect their phone to um mm -hmm. Using some programs, you can. Uh, there's like a Bluetooth dongle that allows you to connect your phone. Um, BlueStacks works with um, a phone app that will. Um, that's like a cell phone, an Android cell phone emulator, which means you can use your computer basically as if it's your smartphone. Um, if it's an Apple, there is. I think there. I can't. I'm blinking on the name of that um shoot i can't think of the name of it um but anyway yeah there there are certain workarounds um for that go ahead and reach out to me um but yeah blue stacks is a cell phone emulator there's a bluetooth dongle that you can use on toby devices or communication devices in general um for an iphone that i know works um but yeah i i would want to get a few more pieces of information from that person Okay. Um, and then again, I have a feeling this may be a little hard to ask, but somebody in the chat is wondering, what's the general price for um, a room? Like not including the electricity piece, but maybe just like the equipment piece? Totally depends. Um, yeah. I would yeah man it just totally depends on what you need um you know if you're looking at just a couple of light switches it could be 
uh, with like an Amazon Echo, it could be as, as cheap as $50 or $100. Um, and again, like for, for people who just want to start somewhere, that's a good place to begin. Just, yeah. you know, um, do a, a lamp plug-in or a smart bulb um, and connect it to an Amazon Alexa, and then you can fold in things from there. Um, but ballparking, I would say maybe if we might spend in the range of 700 to 800 dollars give or take and that would be on multiple rooms now that would be on you know our home automation service which i said you know before focuses on one or two rooms where you spend the majority of your time and that would include the deadbolt lock the thermostat okay. the echo show the light switches all of those things okay um so Somebody else asked, uh, what if we already have a security system with automated deadbolts? Would we still have to use um, the one that you recommended? No, we would try to work with that person and make sure that they keep what they already have and are used to using um, and figure out what else we could fold into their system to add to it. Um, another person asked, and this, um, kind of came up a couple of times of just like how to implement technology in an older home. Um, this person does say like, if a house doesn't have neutral wiring, does the whole house need to be rewired or um, just the outlets that this, um, the outlets that are being switched out? That's a good question. I, I'm yeah. not sure if you can do it in just a specific area. If somebody knows the answer, please go ahead and put that in the chat, but I'll try to find an answer to that question. Um, but as far as an older home goes, I live in New Orleans. It's an old town. My house was built in the 1920s, um, so it's 100 years old. You can still use home automation products. Um, while you may not be able to use those things that require that special wiring um, <clears throat> and you may not be able to use that thermostat because it's likely um, or potential that you don't have central air um, there are workarounds so you could do like the led smart bulbs or you can do those appliance modules lamp plugins um, there are actually z-wave uh, switches that can mechanically flick a single pole light switch up and down it just fits on top of it. Fantastic workaround. Um, as long as you have Wi-Fi, then the, the Alexa systems or the voice recognition systems, if you're using Google or whatever, um, should still work. Okay. Um, the next question, again, kind of brings us back to um, Apple and Mac products. And I think this particular person is asking, are there Mac versions of I gave. So I am happy to answer that Please one. Do. I think you may be thinking about like a communication device that has IGs built into it that's Mac based. Um, Toby Dynavox recently, I mean, recently, like May, I think, of 2022 released their TD Pilot, which is an iPad based um, IG system. I have, um, I used it previously, um, I should say, my background is um, a speech language pathologist. I worked at a major rehab hospital um, in our technology department um, prior to coming to Les Turner. So I did get to physically use it prior to coming to Les Turner. Um, so that could be um, something that you look into. Um, again, though, the speech pathologist in me, and I know I'm gonna have Jeff's backup, is feature matching please 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 i cannot emphasize enough going to a facility where you'll be seen by a speech language pathologist and or um, an occupational therapist who is going to see what you want out of a device and how you can use a device and then match that to a product so just because um, you know somebody else with ALS that's used a Toby before, um, it's not a one size fits all. And I think, Jeff, we, we could also say home automation really needs yep. to be feature matched too, right? It's not just this one size fits all or, um, you know, one sweeping answer for everything. We really want to make sure that um, 
the most important features of a home or of using technology or of doing these kind of everyday tasks um, are highlighted and explained to the person that you're working with so they can then kind of help you through the decision process of like what's the best advice to use mm -hmm. um, for you is that I hope I'm not speaking out of turn there perfectly said um <laughs> Yeah, I'll just add, you know, what works for one person may not work for the next. Um, yeah. <clears throat> everybody's different. And like you mentioned, you know, be your best advocate. And, um, you know, if you have an understanding of what you want and what works for you, don't be afraid to ask those questions and try to figure out what you can fit into um, into what works with, for you. But yeah, no, you, you, you said it perfect. Um, if I have, so another question is, if I have Google Home, do you offer their products or do you know of any Google affiliated pro products? Yep. Um, again, that goes back to the feature matching and what works for one okay. person may not work for the next. You know, the Axial system, <clears throat> we found that the Axial system works best for, you know, a lot of people, um, but that is not to say that we won't um provides other pieces of technology or other things. Um, again, we would want to get more information from this individual, figure out what else they want to add to what they already have, and yeah, and just figure out how to do that, and we would we would help them. Awesome. Um, a couple other questions that came in. Yes, absolutely, we will be um, uploading this webinar. It has been recorded, um, so that'll get uploaded to our website within the next couple of days or so. And then we will also have Jeff's slides available um, on our website as well. So if anybody has to like jet or run or um, wanna come back to this Q&A, um, you can absolutely, you'll have access to this. Um, okay, going through the chat again here. Um, Jeff, I think you kind of touched on this. Um, is Axial strictly Windows-based? This person is more of an iOS um, person, but I, it sounded like they do have. Yeah, they have an iOS app. Yeah, it, it's more compatible with Windows, I will say, but yeah, it, it does have an iOS app. Mm -hmm. um, any particular blind systems that you recommend to work with Google Home? No, I. you know, I don't. Okay. We. We try to be careful with recommending products that we haven't yeah. tested ourselves. Um, and blinds, it, blinds and automatic door openers are two of those things we get asked about a lot. Um, but we haven't we haven't done the testing on our end to confirm, you know, which products work the best. Um, and they're a little bit more on the expensive side, so we've you know made that decision not to provide those, um, at least for now. Um, so no, I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable making any recommendations as far as blinds go, but I know there are a lot of great products out there. Okay. So then again, that might just have to be further directed towards, um, somebody to really kind of talk through what, it, oh, what features of your house, what do your blinds look like? And then kind of what technology works best for you. Okay. Um, can my smartphone be connected to Alexa without having to rewire or use the Axial software? Hmm. Trying to understand that question better. Yeah. Um. So I think in general, if you're using voice control, if you're still using your voice, you can connect your smartphone to your Alexa. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would, I would think so. Yeah. Um, but with some of the more, um, like if you're just using it for like, hey Alexa, call my husband, or um, hey Alexa, um, play play this music or read this text out loud. I think you can just connect. Um, Alexa to your smartphone, but for some of those more um, technical commands, like turn on the lights or turn on the fan, you would need um, 
Yeah, you would need to connect yeah. those devices using a hub. You would need to connect yeah. those devices to the Axial or to the Alexa system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be that's where like the Z Wave, Zigbee, or Bluetooth or Wi Fi products come in. Um, somebody else says, um, I use Echo Connect. However, if I call someone and have to press a number, there's no way to do this. Are there alternative systems voice banked or voice based? which could do this. So using Echo Connect um, with like voice controls? Um, I'm not very, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't full, yeah, I haven't used the Echo Connect feature before. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure of that one. Again, go ahead and shoot me an email yeah. and um, let me know, again, as much detail as you could provide, let me know and I'll get an answer for you. And that's Jeff at teamgleason.org, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, what can I do if we don't have neutral wires? Yeah, that's a good question. Again, yeah. the you can, of course, if you would want to pay for it, have it rewired. But again, that's very laborious and expensive. An easy workaround are, is the um, the appliance modules that give you the ability to turn those lamps on and off and easily fold into that Alexa or that Axial Z-Wave system. Um, or of course, I mentioned those mechanical switches. Again, they just fit on top of your single pole switch and have the ability to, to flick the light on and off mechanically. Um, Jeff, do you have means for accepting equipment that can no longer be used? due to the progression of ALS, like a shower chair, power chairs, lifts, et cetera? It depends on what it is. Um, okay. Home automation products that have already been used or connected, we typically don't accept. Um, power wheelchairs, we would just point you to like um, your local DME company and ask if they would want it. Or of course you could post that in the um, ALS equipment exchange Facebook group. Um, if any of you have never used that, I, I highly recommend you join that group. Um, shower chairs and portable wheelchairs. We just don't have the room at the moment to store those things. Um, but what we do accept donations and returns of are um, mounts, like wheelchair mounts, floor mounts, communication devices, especially. Um, you know, that's how we keep our loaner program afloat, and we really, really appreciate getting those um, devices donated to us um, when they're no, lo no longer needed because we just repurpose them. We wipe all the information off of them and then basically set them up like new and send them out to people who can't go through insurance to get, um, to get a device on their own. Uh, someone in the chat says the TD Pilot is a game changer for Apple users. I agree. I agree. Nice. Um, that was a really, really big addition to um, the speech generating device um, closet. Um, somebody also says for partial home neutral wiring, um, it depends on the breaker box at the meter. There you go. Um, so that is super, super helpful to know. Yeah. Um, and then, Jeff, I think last but not least, um, how far in advance should someone begin like learning about equipment, thinking about home automation? Um, any advice regarding when to start or when to maybe think about learning? how to use these systems? It is never too early. And I'll also say it's never too late. Yep. Um, you know, it, if it all seems daunting, then like I said before, just start with one or two things at a time. Um, you know, get that, that the smart bulb is the easiest thing. You just buy it on Amazon is there in a day or two. Um, you can get an Alexa and there you go. You can automate that one light switch or light bulb, sorry. Um, it's a good place to start, but you could do your research now. Um, the more information you have, the better. Um, and of course, if you want to just schedule a call, just reach out to us and we'll put you in touch with one of our tech associates um, and they can kind of go through some of this stuff in, in more detail with you. Um, but yeah, no, it's never too early and it's definitely never too late. 
Same with communication devices. It's mm -hmm. never too early to learn. Even if you're somebody who I think about my mom, who's like, oh, I'm not tech savvy or like anything like that. Um, it's never too <clears throat> early to learn how to use a device. It is never too late. Um, when we think about communication, it's just as important of being able to, you know, open a door, turn on a light. Um, so, and it's a huge part of who you are. So I can't yep. stress that enough as well. Um, and then any questions that you would recommend asking, like when you're working with an electrician or you're working with a contractor, anything that you guys at Team Gleason have found to be really helpful when deciding, you know, um, what to do? Again, that's one of those questions that it really yeah. just depends. Um, I will say, um, if there are any electricians on the call, go ahead and put your earmuffs on now. You'd be <laughs> surprised how many electricians lack the knowledge of home automation. Um, so the best question to ask is just um, what their experience level is when it comes to using home automation. And if they don't have any, then you know maybe start asking a couple of others who might have some experience. Um, a good place to start is I mean, you could go to the Best Buy Geek Squad um, and they'd probably be able to answer most of you know, the questions that you have. There are a lot of home security systems, somebody brought that up, that are doing home automation now. Um, fantastic resources there. Um, you know, these are the types of companies and resources that are more knowledgeable in home automation than I would say a standard electrician is. Um, and then if you're talking about a contractor, it's really just making sure that the wiring is set up properly and that smart switches are being installed as the home's being built. Um, and, you know, even though you may not need them in the moment, like you still might have upper extremity function, you still may be able to, um, you know, you have that mobility around your house. It's good. It's good to, to build out for the future. Um, you know, just again, be sure that you're picking a system that you're going to want to use, um, you know, as far as like Z-Wave or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi goes. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's great advice. Um, and then one more, somebody snuck in the chat, and this is also, I think, just a great plug. Um, you can also contact your local branch of your ALS, um, a, your ALS association. Um, many of them will have loan closets for items that um, people can no longer use or they no longer need. So you can find that at www.als.org. If you're in the Chicagoland area too, Les Turner, we have a loan closet and we're happy to accept um, certain pieces of equipment. Um, so you can also contact me. Um, my email address is adoyle at lesturnerals.org and I can put that in the chat um, really fast. And just reminders of different resources that we talked about today. So lesturnerals.org backslash resources for a list of our um, ALS resource guides, our a link to our decision tool, a link to our ALS um, learning series. We have teamgleason.org backslash need assistance. So that's going to take you to their assistance program where you can choose um, which application that you want to fill out if you need specific um, assistance from Team Gleason. The loan closet that was brought up at als.org. Um, we also have the YouTube link. So if you want to figure out whether or not you have neutral wiring that's in there as well and then jeff's email jeff at teamgleason.org i'm ann marie i'm at a doyle at lesturnerals.org um all right so jeff thank you so much thank you everyone who um has attended today I really appreciate you giving us your um afternoon I also want to do a couple plugs before we sign off. So our next ALS learning series is going to take place October 6th. It is regarding caregiving with Ann Litsky, who is a um, PhD. She has her PhD in psychology. She also is, runs some of our support group um, at Les Turner ALS uh, Foundation. So that's going to be happening October 6th. Um, at lunchtime again, so 12 central time. 
We also have our symposium um, on ALS. That is going to be um, Monday, November 7th. You can register at lesturnerals.org backslash symposium. We have both in-person and virtual um, options. And then again, thank you again for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Um, we also, if you could take a moment to fill out our survey that will be directed um, immediately after we conclude the webinar, that would be greatly appreciated. Your feedback really helps us um, figure out what we can do better, what we're doing um, well at, and any additional topics for future um, presentations. So it's really, really helpful to us. Um, and again, find us on any of our social media platforms. You know, there's a person on the other end um, of our social media and they're dying to interact with you guys and engage with you guys. So you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, thank you all again. Jeff, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it today. Everybody stay well and have a great rest of your day.